You know, free thinkers like us, we can make a difference because we've decided to move on. But before I tell you who we are, you remember that movie, The Poseidon Adventure? You remember that? In the 70s, I know I'm dating myself, but you remember that movie, The Poseidon Adventure? The ship capsized, right? And so what were the majority of the people doing? What, what were they saying? They were saying, well, let's wait. Let's wait on help to get here. And there was a small group of people, which really kind of represents us a little bit. There was a small group of people saying, no, help is not coming. This ship has capsized, and if it's turned upside down, that means we got to go up to get out of here. They were the people that escaped. We're the ones here that realized our ship has capsized. That means we have to change our paradigm. And what is our paradigm? Our paradigm is the model, the pattern that forms the basis of what we believe. That's not working. Tomorrow is Sunday. Guess what's going to happen tomorrow? 20 to 25 million dollars are going to get sucked out the black community and go to these churches. How many people, you know, embrace physics and astronomy? Okay, then you know what a black hole is, right? A black hole is a, 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 a gap or a, I can't explain it like a physics can, but it occurs when a supernova, a star explodes. And it creates a hole with a gravitational pull that's so great that light can't even escape. That's what churches represent in our communities, black holes, okay? that the light from our mind is being sucked into it. You know, anything that gets close to a black hole will be sucked up. So you want to know why we're doing so poorly. Have you noticed that as more churches come in the black community, the worse off we get? The more of the mega churches, the worse things get. And you know why? Because they're black holes. They're sucking the light from our minds. You're going to church hearing the same thing you've been hearing since you was five years old. You know, so we, have, we are representing those who have decided to embrace the intellectual side of life, okay? White folks that are here, listen, we're not, we're not asking for equality. We can't, how are we going to be equal? When you, you know, we're 400 years behind to start with. And the second thing about equality, I've never understood that. We want equal rights. Listen, if I break in your home and I steal your gold and I steal your oil and I steal your diamonds and I steal your resources, how then do you expect me to turn it, turn around and share it amongst you e e equally? Does that make sense? I'm not going to take anything, steal from you. They enslaved, black people were enslaved. Let's put it like that. So they're not going to turn around and say, okay, I enslaved you for 400 years. Now here, let me divide these things amongst you equally. So we're not asking for that. We know the black folks that you see here in this event tonight, today, we know that it's on us to make a change. We know that, okay? Now, we just finished the movie. My movie is done. Come on, give it up. The movie is for all of us. It's going to represent us, I'm telling you. We did you proudly with this movie. Now, we had a few select people that saw the movie. Raise your hand if you saw the movie last night. Okay, just a few folk. And we're going to keep everybody informed. Of course, like I told you, the website is down. We got white folks in the movie. We got uh, Professor Lawrence Krauss. You familiar with Lawrence Krauss? One of the great astrophysicists, okay? He's in it. We ask a few black physicists to be in there. Guess what they say? Oh, no, I ain't gonna. When we went to Arizona to interview Lawrence Krauss, you know what Lawrence Krauss said? He said, I tell you what, I believe in what you're doing. I'm gonna waive your appearance fee. He said, and all of the other black physicists that did, I'm not going to mention any names because we might need him down the road. 
But he said, shame on them for not participating in this movement. And I agree. But... One of the greatest things, one of the worst things I should say, is great in a negative sense, that happened to black people was when they told us to lean on the Lord, put all your problems, put your trust in God, and he'll provide all of your needs. You know what that did? That took us out the game. Because this is a highly competitive game. You cannot pray your way into being competitive. The, the point you made about basketball, we are scoring points for the other team right now. And where is the incentive to be productive when you say God is going to do it for you? We might as well just go home and pray about it and allow God to work his magic. But we serve a God, or they serve a God that they ought to know by now doesn't intervene. We all prayed for a guilty verdict for Trayvon. He doesn't intervene. If there is a God, and I'm quoting somebody else, and I can't remember who it was, then us moral people, us intelligent people, we have an obligation to hunt his ass down and kill him. Because he's foul. Listen, if he has a personality, then he's foul. If he has a personality. Now you want to claim, you know, well, how did, how did all this get here? Well, now you're talking physics. Ask a physicist that. Don't ask a preacher that. Physics is the interconnection between matter and energy. Okay? Described by the laws of physics. So, you, you know, that's a question for the, for the physicists. But now if you're talking about, you know, life, I think some one of the speakers said there are some things that we never know, but I subscribe to creationism. It's a, I mean, to uh, evolution. It's a 150-year theory that has yet to be disproven. And if you really understand it, that you didn't come from a monkey, if you really take the time out to read about it and understand it before you judge it, you would know that, Steve Harvey. But, as, you know, who are we? We are too humble to think that a God is specifically blessing us with personal favors. You see that field of grass out there? That's like one blade of grass out of trillions thinking that it's supposed to, that it's entitled to receive more sunlight and rain than the, than the blade of grass sitting right next to it. That's crazy. This is an exercise in insanity. Listen. We are too intellectually embarrassed, okay? To subscribe to a God who tells us that women came from a man's rib. We just can't do that. We're too, we're, you know, we're too embarrassed. We're too busy on Sunday to keep going to some charlatans saying the same thing over and over again. We're too embracing of diversity to worship a God who chooses one particular group over another group. That ought to turn you off. It says right there, I am the God of Israel. Don't say nothing about Africa. It tells you in it, but you don't read it. We're too realistic to believe that a God could actually have a son, who, by the way, was him in the flesh temporarily. And we're too secure and confident in ourselves to worship a God who's jealous. I mean, all of these things, okay? We, but see, we can be taken seriously. All the major networks ought to be here. CNN, everybody, they all ought to be here. Now, if this was a church rally, they'd be here. If this was a big old church rally with T.D. Jakes, T.D. Jakes come to Atlanta, you had all the news people there. 
They ought to be here right now, you know. And why should they be here? First of all, this is a great opportunity for them to see, you know, black folk who are not, who are thinking differently, who are free from the grip of what we were placed in. Let me get back to my point. We had uh, Lawrence Krauss, we had other whites, we had Dan Barker, you might have seen him on Oprah, he's an ex-evangelical evangelical pre uh, preacher. We had David Ornstein here in New York who is an anthropologist. So we've got, a, we've got whites in it. Now let me tell you why. I'm going to get criticism from a lot of the black um, pan-Africanists, a lot of your diehard blacks, but let me tell you, one of the reasons that we have white folk in there is because their ancestors perhaps played a role in putting you, you know, in mental bondage. Quite naturally, they hold some of the keys to open the doors. Knowledge is knowledge. At this point in time, we're too, we're too in dire straits. Our house is burning. We need to get knowledge from anybody we can get it from right now, because obviously what we're doing is not working, okay? Now, one of the things that kills me about a, a lot of your Pan-Africanists, and I don't have a problem with all of them, it's just some. They want to point out how everything comes from Africa. There's an over-glorification, and that's true. Africa is old. What doesn't come out of Africa? We know that. But the thing is, when you point out all of these guys and you want to criticize Christianity, which you should, but you say, you know what? We didn't have those gods in Africa. We worship this God, and we worship this God, and we had this God. None of those gods could save your butt from getting enslaved. None of them. None of them could save you from getting subjugated, from getting colonized. You're still being colonized. You're still being tricked because you got people here from the Caribbeans. Raise your hand if you're from the, the Caribbeans. Okay. Listen. That was just another trick to say that you won your independence. Nigeria is not independent. Haiti is not independent. Jamaica is not independent. You cannot be independent when you don't even control the economy of your country. So you're still dependent. That's just a cute thing to make you think that you are. But you're not. We're not independent here. Oh, we, we, were, we were freed from the British. We got our independence from the British. Ghana, we got our independence from the French. No, you didn't. You don't control the economy of that nation. And partly because we're drunk. Africa is breaking number, they're breaking records converting into Christianity right now. I mean, Africa is going, every other country around the world is beginning to wake up but Africa. They got a saying in Africa that says, if you're black and you're on your way to church and you pass by a white man, turn around and go back home because you already seen God today. They're messed up. And I know this hurts, but that's the truth. Listen, we're not sitting around waiting on a God to do something. We're not that stupid to think that putting our hands in this class position and praying is going to change our predicament. You got to be crazy as hell to think that. Like Dan Barker said, this position like this, look at this right here. Hold on, I'm going to put the mic down. And I'm quoting this from Dan Barker, who was in, who was in the, uh, the movie that we made. Look at this. What is this? This is a shackling of the wrist. Your head down. Head is down. You're bowed over. You're hunched over. Please, master, don't hurt me. Look at this position right here. You got your hands ready to be shackled. That's what religion does.